Hey guys, welcome to Tech News Day. In the tech industry, probably more than any other industry, companies are anything but faceless. Mm -hmm. How we feel about a company is directly correlated to how we feel about the person who's running it. And tech companies often go out of their way to present their brand as one person's singular vision, even when it's usually bullshit. You can't think about Apple without picturing Steve Jobs and that big old turtleneck giving a slick keynote or Tim Cook imitating a Steve Jobs keynote poorly. Look at that dancing mouse. When you think about Facebook, you think about how Mark Zuckerberg's probably just an alien who's gathering human behavioral data off Facebook and sending back to the mothership. Uh, T-Mobile is basically a corporate manifestation of John Ledger's midlife crisis, and, and so on and so on and so on. Probably more than any other CEO, though, Elon Musk is the one that people look up to like he's some sort of real-life Tony Stark. He's building fast cars, sending rockets into space, and making a strong case for renewable energy actually being pretty cool. He's also got a hot girlfriend. Mm -hmm. he, he's also uh, sort of a fucking weirdo, though, when you get onto the surface there. He, he does a much better job than Mark Zuckerberg, covering up the fact that he's a socially awkward, out-of-touch billionaire dork, but sometimes, you know, the facade breaks. Like when he randomly inserted a South Park joke into the last year's SpaceX Mars presentation, or this past weekend when he inexplicably debuted his latest product, a $500 personal flamethrower. Elon. Elon, what are you doing? So Musk debuted his new definitely not electric product over the weekend, uh, hyping its launch on social media where he shared this video of him looking like a total dork using it. Along with the caption, don't do this. Also, I want to be clear that a flamethrower is a super terrible idea. Definitely don't buy one, unless you like fun. Wink. And sure enough, uh, yeah, it's available for pre-order over at the website for The Boring Company. Musk's tunnel boring venture that he created on a whim, specifically so that he could dig in an underground tunnel underneath Los Angeles to make his commute to work short. The Boring Company is seriously pursuing the idea of underground tunnels to relieve car traffic, but the whole venture have, has always been sort of a weird half joke as well, with even the name reflecting the fact that tunnels are pretty boring compared to space travel and electric sports cars. Back when he launched The Boring Company, the only actual consumer product they sold were hats, simply featuring the company name on them. But because Musk is basically a celebrity to so many people, those hats ended up selling really well. And last month, Musk tweeted out 46,000 limited edition Boring hats sold. 4,000 to go. Then, Flamethrower. It's not really oh, okay. limited edition. 50,000? I mean, it's limited. It's an edition I mean, of 50,000. You're not wrong. You can't get them anymore. You think he like he went down in that tunnel and was like, "What's something fun to do down here?" I know I can't run the big machine. Shoot flames. And they were like, "Well, you can uh, kind of melt this stuff over here. We got a flamethrower." And he's like, "Why the fuck doesn't everyone have flamethrowers?" Yeah. This is my next problem to solve. You know, Bezos is trying to solve all the medical industry's problems. Flamethrower is gonna be his. Undoing. I'm gonna cause the medical industry problems. It's the problem. These guys they work too hard their whole life, and then they Elon Musk he's coming around to 50, got his hands on flamethrower. He's just gonna be running around all day burning things. And why not? He never got the chance to. When he was, my dad never let me play with a flamethrower, and by yeah. God, I'm gonna make sure there's a flamethrower in every child's hands. But yeah, so he tweeted that out like, "Oh, we're almost out of the hats. Next up, flamethrower." But he was not joking, apparently, because now that 50,000 hats have been sold, the hats are no longer available, and now they're selling this flamethrower. It's like a weird Kickstarter. Yeah. Oh, uh, why? Yeah. Well, who the hell knows? And and to be clear, this flamethrower isn't a technological breakthrough in any way. It is literally this $112 airsoft rifle modified to house this $60 propane blowtorch. It's basically a joke, though to be fair, you have to have a pretty high IQ to understand Elon Musk's sense of humor. Mm -hmm. Regardless, people are pre-ordering it in droves, and it might have even sold out by the time this video goes up, since these flamethrowers are also a limited edition of just 20,000 units. So, uh, yeah, it, it's a pretty profitable stupid joke. I mean, when, when all 20,000 of these are sold, that's a gross of $10 million and a profit uh, of probably at least half that. All for a company that hasn't made a cent on its actual purpose of digging tunnels. Not bad. Of course, one question you might have had when you saw that footage of Elon Musk jokingly threatened to burn his cameraman alive is, how is this legal? Short answer, America. Long answer, well, okay, it's actually sort of, sort of unclear. Unlike with firearms, which have been around for hundreds of years and have practical applications in hunting and self-defense, the law, for the most part, hasn't had to put much thought into personal flamethrowers, unless you put them on a drone. 
then the FAA is on your ass. Oh, you can't operate that drone drunk. You can't operate that drone over here. Oh, I can't fly a drone into a neighbor's house and yeah. videotape them taking a shower. Big bring, deal. Bring that drone back down to earth and go have fun with a flamethrower somewhere. I don't care. No, yeah. no, no, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be any federal law in the books re regulating flamethrowers in any way, though they are banned completely in Maryland. And uh, here in California, they have to have a reach of less than 10 feet. Oh, that's going to save all the potential uh, fires that they could cause. Yeah. So even though Musk is here in California. Wait, hold on. Are we sure that Musk isn't behind the latest round of the worst fires, fires in California history? Arguably. Mm -hmm. No, we don't this know This is that. all a cover up. We don't know that. Because mm -hmm. he spends his time in the north of the state, the south is. That's mm -hmm. why he ran to the north. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, Musk is here in California, but the flame on his little boring flamethrower is less than 10 feet, so all good. Get out there and burn some shit down. Yeah. To be fair, though, it's honestly more of a blowtorch than a flamethrower, especially compared to the types of flamethrowers that were used in the World Wars or, or even uh, to the other commercially available flamethrowers that you can order on the internet right now, like the... $900 XM42 from Ion Productions or the 1600 X15 from Throw Flame. I think we covered these a long time ago mm -hmm. on Weekly Weird News. Uh, both of those seem really, really, really fucking dangerous in the wrong hands, but hey, I think we reported on that shit like three years ago, and it's still out there. Yeah, the right to bear arms with, I guess, anything. It's getting pried out of my hot, burnt hands. <laughs> yeah. Now, of course, fire is fire, and the Boring Company's mini flamethrower with its two-foot range could do plenty of damage, either on accident or on purpose. And now it's prompted California State Assemblyman Miguel Santiago to suggest new legislation to ban the sale of Musk's flamethrower in the Golden State. Since California is just now coming off of one of our worst fire seasons in history. It was bad. He also said in a statement to the LA Times that the flamethrower stunt feels like a slap in the face given how accommodating <laughs> that California and LA have been specifically to Musk's tunnel concept. Yeah. You know what? Fuck the earth. Sounds like dig a great right idea. Yeah, come dig a... Okay, guys. Here's my six-month update. Tunnel's going okay, but check this shit out. <laughs> Musk, what are you doing? Please, put it away. You've made a terrible mistake. Yes, possibly. The whole thing's self-serving. Like I said, the tunnel boring thing... He's doing it as a proof of concept to literally sell to the city of Los Angeles. Yeah. Because I, in the, ironically, looked it up today about the uh, the way that the subway is expanding here. They're going like two or three miles yeah. under uh, mid-city. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take them six years. Yeah. No. He just wants the contract to do it in like half that time. Get like 15 Elon Musks down there with flamethrowers and just get it done. And we don't even know how many Elon Musks there are. There could be hundreds for all we know. All running around with flamethrowers setting California on fire. Yeah, he's like Hank Scorpion. And then they're like, you can't catch me. I'm going to my, <laughs> going, I'm going to Mars. Yeah. See ya. Real life Hank Scorpio. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. And yeah, that Santiago guy, he was also like, uh, as Peter Parker's uncle said, great power comes great responsibility. Okay, shut up. Yeah, he's like Elon Musk. He's a dork. He reads comics. <laughs> yeah. Probably loves Elon. that guy. Let me say it in language you understand. And then Elon's like, yeah, well, he fucking died. Yeah. And you know what happened after he died? Peter Parker became a great hero. Mm -hmm. So And Peter Parker doesn't follow the law. No. He's out there, you know, breaking laws with his photographs. Regulation. Regulation would stop all the superheroes from He's, he's like a crime. drone. Yeah. The FAA would be on his ass yeah. like that. Anyway, if anything, it sounds like Musk's flamethrower, uh, it might inadvertently get flamethrowers completely banned here in California, when previously you could buy one from a smaller company that didn't have so much publicity attached to it. So thanks, Elon. Yeah. Anyways, uh, it'll be really interesting to see which boring company product comes next once these ones sell out, because flamethrowers are going to be pretty hard to top. The boring company, not so boring. Not so boring anymore. But uh, let's move on, because speaking of things that are only legal because no one has taken the time to pass a law against it yet, we really need to talk about deep fakes. <sighs> it's a new AI face swapping technology trend that people online are, of course, using mostly to make fake celebrity porn with. <sighs> You'll see, back in the early days, the dial-up days, fake celebrity porn involved simply photoshopping one person's head onto another person's body. And it didn't fool anybody. Now, though, if you know enough about machine learning and AI, you can tell a program to go compile thousands of photos of a celebrity's face from Google Images and then train it to convincingly replace the face of a porn performer with that celebrity's face. Which sounds like it would be shoddy and unconvincing, much like the photoshops of years past, but no. 
Uh, the results are convincing enough to make us and ho hopefully everyone else terrified of the implications. Yeah, so what's wild is that this is not the work of Adobe or NVIDIA or any of the other big companies working on similar deep learning projects. This is the work of one man, just one guy who's interested in programming. He started posting his work to Reddit and showing other people how to do it just last month. It's only been a month. And now there's an entire subreddit devoted to the technique, multiple actually, which uh, it's all of course mostly filled with incredibly creepy fake porn. And to be fair, it's not all porn. No. There's some interesting non-porn examples. Uh, someone took the Princess Leia in Rogue One scene and then added actual Princess Leia's face on top of it and it actually kind of looked better. Uh, uh, and then the people are putting Nicolas Cage's face on They're really astroturfing that subreddit with yeah. uh, Nicolas Cage stuff. You're not fooling anyone though, it's mostly porn. Yes. And while you might not feel too bad about celebrities having convincing looking fake porn made of them, you should probably realize that it could just as easily be you one day. Celebrities are easy for source material because there's so many pictures of them out there, but then again, if you use Facebook or Instagram or have had your photo taken and posted to the internet more than a handful of times, in the future, probably not gonna be too hard for someone to put your face onto something unsavory and then send it to people who will definitely believe it's real. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah, there have been uh, already uh, several posts on that deepfake subreddit where posters specifically talk about wanting to try the technology out on girls that they have a crush on or exes using Facebook pictures. Mm -hmm. So they would just have to download a bunch of their target's photos, find a similar enough looking porn star, using existing facial recognition technologies like Porn World Doppelganger, because those exist, toss it all in the fake app, which is a recently released user-friendly application of this, and now they've got some pretty convincing hardcore porn of someone who doesn't even know that any of this is happening. The whole idea is very unsettling, although I'll say, outside of the porn context, it brings basic level CGI to cheap productions in the sense that we could put me in a little bit of a fatter suit and make me Donald Trump on this show and yeah. have Donald Trump There's as a There's a lot of great potential for it. Yeah. But as with everything, the creepiest people have to ruin everything. Y anyways, is this illegal? No. <laughs> Damn it. Not yet. Existing revenge porn law doesn't say shit about false images. Uh, meanwhile, the First Amendment already protects shit like caricatures and parodies, including porn parodies. There's enough grounds to probably be able to sue in civil court for defamation, but that's very expensive. And since this is so new, it would be hard to uh, argue, yeah. and uh, it'd be, it would be a very complicated case for a judge. Yeah. Hold up. Now. Or lawyers. But that's him in the video. What are you talking about? And what a man! For now, Discord uh, has at least it's taken a stand, shutting down the deepfake server on their platform on the grounds that they ban non-consensual pornography. Aside from that, though, we are uh, officially living in an episode of Black Mirror. And uh, you know what? This reality starting to jump the shark, I'd say. Yeah. The worst is just like now, anytime anything comes out, any sort of like video of someone famous saying doing something bad. You don't know like, if it's them? Oh, it's a, that's it's fake. a deep fake. Fake news. Deep fake news. Deep fake news. Deep fake news. Yeah. So, it's true. Yeah, get a degree in um, video forensics, because we're going to need a lot of forensics people in the future, you know apparently. What? You know what? As a matter of fact, I don't think Rob Ford was smoking crack in Toronto. No. That, was, fake. that was a deep fake news. Yeah. He yeah. did die, though. Rest in peace. Is, yeah. Or whatever. Anyways, uh, now that everyone's jimmies are thoroughly rustled. Let's get Phil in here to tell you about a few other reasons you should be annoyed with technology and should probably fear it. All right, I'm here to go around the big world of tech and tell you everything bad that's happening and then what you can do so you can actually sleep at night, you know? Like, if you want to go on YouTube, you can just, that's a safe place, right? Eh, wrong. Because if you go on the wrong video, you get some, served up some ad, and it's going to leach your CPU and you're going to mine cryptocurrency so some other jerk gets rich. It's not even a good one like Bitcoin, you'll be mining like Monero. What's Monero? Ah, let's go back a little bigger to something called CoinHive. CoinHive is a site that made this JavaScript that you, or if you're some scam artist, you can jam it in the code of your website. So when people like you and me go to their website and we're like, look at the cool things here, it just absolutely rapes your processor and they steal up to 80% of your computing power so that these two people can take your money. And uh, you're just helping them. You don't even know this is going on, but uh, this process was happening in some YouTube ads. So. 
Whoops, uh, what can you do about this? Well, first off, don't use YouTube, just kidding. Uh, make sure you actually have antivirus software. I know you're probably scoffing me and go, Phil, did I use Linux? I don't care. Um, but get antivirus software, make sure it's updated because all the big boys are, um, you know, putting this in their definitions. Or what you can do is uh, if there are certain particular sites that are serving this stuff up, if you get the Adblock plugin, which is popular among stuff, uh, you can de you can still let all the your favorite sites see all your ads, but uh, there's one in there for crypto. It will block certain addresses that uh, are holding this code, so don't get taken. Now, net neutrality, ah, my favorite, one of my favorite topics of the past couple of years. And I, you know, you go, who's uh, who's the the biggest voice of reason when it comes to net neutrality? Is it Phil? Mm -mm. Is it ETC boys? Mm -hmm. Even Shibby. It's Burger King. Yes, Burger King released a oddly succinct video explaining what net neutrality is, but instead of the internet, they just straight up changed out burgers. And these people, whether they're you know actors or not, uh, got very upset. And I think a lot of people who don't really care about this sort of thing, uh, when you put burgers into it, they seem to get what it is. And uh, you know, a lot of people found this very accessible. The one thing I will say that's very uh, frustrating about this is, when you're in a Burger King and they pull this kind of shit, you can walk out and go, hey bud, I'm going to McDonald's, I'm going to Arby's, I'm going to Chick-fil-A. But when your ISP does it, um, you can't go anywhere else because some, sometimes they're the only one you can get. Next up on the hate and net neutrality pain uh, train is YouTube uh, guy and director Rob Bliss. He did kind of a performance art piece right outside of FCC headquarters where he created a slow lane and rode his bike in it. Uh, with a sign on his back that said, hey, uh, if you want the fast lane, it's five bucks. Uh, surprise, surprise, the cops intervened and kind of tried to clear this thing up. Um, I appreciate what he's doing. Again, maybe accessible. Maybe, you know, if you swap out net neutrality for roads, which they always say, people might get it a little bit more. But I have a feeling a lot of the drivers just got really pissed off and probably wanted to kill him with their car. Uh, San Jose Mayor Sam Licardo, uh, he's straight up called bullshit uh, on the FCC panel, so much so that he resigned. Here's a here's a quote from him. Uh, he said, after nine months of deliberation, negotiation, and discussion, we've made no progress toward a single proposal that will actually further the goal of equitable broadband deployment. Although we've adopted principles that pay lip service to that objective, not a single one of the draft recommendations attempts to meaningfully identify any new or significant resources to promote digital inclusion. Now that's a lot of stuff, but uh, he kind of went on to say this, and I think this is the succinct part. It's obvious that this body is going to deliver to the industry what the industry wants. So there you go, there's someone who, uh, who was on the commission and he just was like, I can't get anything done here. I know a lot of other people working for the FCC have kind of tried to fight it, but Ajit Pai said no, and did the equivalent of throwing uh, Reese's cup full of piss in their face. Next up, the government is always tracking you. Well, guess what? Now the government knows, knows what it's like to be tracked. Are you using that Strava Fitness app? You're probably not, but a bunch of people are using it and they're uploading their stuff to the cloud, man. And then out in there, everybody can see all the places where everyone else is like running and doing stuff where their heart rate gets up. Well, a guy named Tobias Schneider noticed patterns of life in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Syria, and places where maybe there were airstrips nearby, or maybe people wouldn't be normally hanging out. And a lot of people have kind of put together, including Tobias, that, hey, uh, these, are, these are secret military bases, and some of them are American. And, uh, you know, some of these places where these guys are running around are essentially drawing maps of underground tunnels or secret buildings or anything like that. So, whoops. Uh, Strava's uh, suggestion, their solution here is, uh, hey, military, turn off uploads. Uh, the military, I'm sure, is having tons of uh, conferences and memos being in across all their stuff to where they're like, hey, guys, you, this is your new social media policy. But it's just the ultimate irony that uh, the stuff they're using to track us in a commercial product was used to track them. Sucks when it's on the other foot. And that's a wrap. That's that. Woo! Ooh. Technology sucks. <laughs> Boo. Boo. <laughs> Anyways, that's Tech News Day. <laughs> uh, please check out our other videos. Oh, by the way, subscribe, please, for the love of God, yeah. subscribe. Uh, and then uh, check out our other videos. We had a uh, discussion on Monday about the Grammys and how they're not really relevant. And then also we have a brand new episode of Tugs where 
Damn it, we finally take credit for ruining the gaming industry. We did it. It's our fault. Stay humble.